So we're going to go on to the last part of uh, of the podcast, and every week we'll do something we'll do something a little different to 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 start the month. Normally, we'll we'll do a top ten list, and because this is our uh, our first time, we're gonna we're, to get to know us a little bit better. We're gonna do our top ten movies of all time, so we'll work backwards from ten, and uh, just so you can kind of get to know us. Now, I'm gonna preface this by saying that these are not the movies that I or Xavier think are the best ten movies of all time. These are our favorite movies of all time. They could be bad movies to you. They could be bad movies to us. But we either grew up with them. There's some nostalgia for us. They in some in my cases, some of them put me on the career path that I that I, I moved on to. So. My n- number 10 movie is The Prestige. Ooh. So The Prestige, for those of you who don't know, it's directed by Christopher Nolan. It's fantastic. It's got Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale, but they don't play Wolverine and Batman. Uh, what I like about this movie, it makes you think. It is complex. It takes place during three different time periods, and you have to try to figure out what's going on. And this is christopher vintage christopher nolan he does not let you he does not give you a basic plot he is there every little thing is there for a specific reason the conflict the ending it is it is by far his best movie and i know he does the batman movies and a lot of you be like now the dark knight and it's great but prestige and memento for him they're better and and the prestige is a movie that i could watch again and again even though it's not one of those movies that you should be able to watch again and again that ending, oh, fantastic. Great ending. That's a great movie choice. Uh, that I, I loved it. Uh, what I'm My movie is not as uh, prestigious as The Prestige, I would say. Uh, it's The Rock with Nicolas Cage and Sean Connery. Oh, that's a good movie. That movie is... I like the motive behind it, and uh, it's about pretty much the premises... Uh, bunch of military guys uh to hijack some weapons to get compensation for uh militant families that have been as you can see uh there's a lot of homeless militaries and there's not enough uh support for them even that we have that problem even today right so it's uh, the motivations is a not a terrible motivation they just have a radical solution to it right uh i just love the dynamic of nicholas cage and sean connery i don't know why it works so well in this movie it's sean connery he works <laughs> with true. everybody that's 100 percent. sean connery is love great. sean connery he's my favorite please come bond. back and act one more time <laughs> he's by far my favorite bond and it's a movie that i watch with my parents and i feel weird i was eight years old watching this so this is kind of messed up there's one scene where you just see a bunch of fbi guys just get brutally murdered and i saw that when i was eight so it's a little bit strange right but his uh, parents are very nice (laughs) yeah don't my parents are great people so don't think that they're terrible but yeah that's my uh that's number that's number 10 for me what's your number nine my number nine number nine so i didn't put this in any order so i have to uh do this on the fly but i'm gonna say it's probably gonna be uh inception uh, Ooh, Chris so Fringo, Chris Nolan Christopher up there too. Here, so. Also, a pretty movie that get you thinking. Get you thinking, like, like uh, Fooch said earlier. The, the Chris Nolan never has a simple plot. It's always something's moving. There's it never ends on like a. There's never really a definite ending all the time. Sometimes there's there's always like a little bit of a twist. So I just love, I love Inception because the concept is just so great. The music. It's one of the best, like, that's oh, one of the yeah. best track lists and scores that I've ever heard. It has Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> not Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio, okay? I apologize. Uh, you better not diss Leo, okay? Leo's There's a lot favorite. of Leo fans listen, that listen to Leo, that will be listening to this. Leo is my favorite actor. I I think I've loved him in every movie that i watched. I have a little bit of a bias, so if it's Leo, that's automatic 7 out of 10. <laughs> no matter what. And that's just bare minimum, right? It's going to get higher than that. Usually, like, like Inception. <laughs> yeah, so uh, like I said, great Christopher Nolan film. It uh, also has Tom Hardy. He's great in it as well. Kind of his breakout role. Yeah, was, well, that was. I feel like that was his breakout role. He really got bigger after I think that. it's still his best movie, to be honest. Yeah, it, it just might be, I think. Uh, yeah, what's your number nine? Fooch? Well, you know, the other thing about Christopher Nolan, because I, I don't have him anywhere else on this list, 
you can't explain a, a good Christopher Nolan movie in like five sentences. You need like 20 minutes to really explain a plot of a Christopher Nolan yeah, movie. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, my number nine, you know, I guess it kind of works for what we're talking about today, is Rocky. Um, I think I think Rocky is the best sports movie. You know, it's, it's the true underdog story. And what I loved about the first Rocky movie that I think that a lot of the other Rocky movies forgot or the Creed movies have forgotten other than Rocky Balboa is that it's not about winning. It's just about going the distance, right? Rocky was picked out of a random person, never had a shot at anything, right? He is he is literally a, a, not a hitman, but like a a, a what a work for a mob guy. Uh, enforcer. He's an enforcer for the mob. That's what he does. <laughs> but he's a great guy. Like he's not like what you would expect, right? He's humble. He doesn't want to hurt people. He has no choice because he comes from this poor comes area of nothing. Philadelphia. Comes That's from how... nothing. That's how he makes his living. And it was he says it to Adrian it, in that really emotional speech. It's not about winning. It's about going the distance. And and that story it resonates to me more than anything else. And I think in our in, in our society of watching sports or anything like that, we either love the favorite because they're our favorite team, or we love the underdog. That that's kind of what we kind of root for. And I think Rocky is what made it you know socially acceptable to do that. Yeah, honestly, that's funny that you put Rocky as your number nine because. Uh... Uh, Rocky, Rocky's actually my number eight. So I'll just, well, well, you'll go to your number eight, but I just want to say since you're we're on that topic yeah, as close. well, Rocky's my actual number eight movie. And I just want to add on to that. Like, it's just such an inspiration, you know, just the fact that he can, it's not about like, I tell a lot of my like employees in my job that it's not about like the, the amount of times you get hit. Like sometimes things happen, but you have to get back up. Rocky's that embodiment of that. Like life hits you down, you just keep getting back up. And as you see in the future films, that his life gets a lot better and he puts himself because he doesn't give up. You know, he just finds a way. He takes that shot, he runs with it. I.e. the bed greatest quarterback of all time, Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, I, but just to kind of go over that, but he does, life gets better for him. But then in five and Balboa and the two creeds, he's back to just being a regular person. He lives in the not uh, most affluent area of Philadelphia, right? We see in Creed mm -hmm. two, like they won't fix the light outside of his house for years. He's been asking for that for years, right? So he's not like he's coming. He's got money. He's back to his roots. He's mm -hmm. never that character is. It, it works with. It's why we love the underdog because he's not a bad character. He's a guy you can easily root for because he's a class act. Yeah, a hundred percent. He's just, I just love the first Rocky film. Well, my number eight movie is The Avengers, and I'm I'm like Xavier. I'm a I'm not a comic book guy, but I'm a big superhero guy. And Cap Captain America is my is one of my favorite superheroes. And you know, The Avengers is 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 really the first of its kind, right? It it although Iron Man is kind of what started the MCU and, and the superhero craze as we think of it today, it's really the Avengers that has allowed it to continue because if the Avengers fails, who knows where we're at, right? The Avengers was, was the brainchild of a couple of people that let's put these superheroes together and see what happens. You know, we never really saw that. You know, we've always talked about, or it was always talked about putting Batman and Superman in a movie. Never happened before, at least in a, in a, in a non-animated movie, you know? And here you go out, have these these superheroes that have made these individual movies and you bring them together and a lot of people didn't think it was going to work how do you how do you put all these egos in check how do you make a movie well the mcu There's has so many characters right how do you focus on so many characters it's, it's true like and the mcu has done it perfectly in their indi the, the, the individual movies in a lot of cases aren't action movies you have civil war that's kind of you know a political thriller you know ant-man's a heist movie you have all every movie's kind of its own little thing but when they get together like the avengers it's a big epic it's an action movie and it's epic and you know, Josh Whedon did a fantastic job in its storytelling. He balanced action with comedy, with drama. You know, we have strong female characters, strong male characters. You know, I, I got to be honest. I was nervous going in and, and the Avengers was really the first kind of MCU movie that really gave me solace that the guy, those guys knew what they were doing and, and they haven't let me down since. It is. It might not be the best of the MCU movies, but it's definitely my favorite of the MCU movies. And Captain America is my hero. Perfect, wonderful. So your number seven? My number seven is gonna have to be Toy Story. Oh, I love Toy Story. Toy Story was just this is pure nostalgia goggles going on, but 
as a kid i just loved the whole concept of it you know woody he was the it guy everybody loved him he was the best no he was the favorite toy and then along along comes buzz who's the newest and greatest thing you know like how cowboys were cool but now we got space guys right space guys are awesome you know and he was just so and he was so in love and he just and the thing is buzz didn't even know he was a toy he thought he was actually buzz Lightyear at the point so that whole concept <laughs> so good. is still great at you're the point sad, and he's like you're man. a toy you're a toy <laughs> just <laughs> at him. it's just it's just so great but i also like the story behind it it's like accepting that hey you might not be the best you might not be the favorite but you have to let in other people so this change happens right we talk about how many times people don't like being out of their safe space their box but Woody accepts it, and he accepts Buzz as finally his own, and they learn to share Andy as a uh, group of toys, like shit. All right. So, what's about your uh, number seven? My number seven, okay, is Armageddon. And I know Armageddon's not the most scientifically accurate movie. I'm not gonna sit here and say I, NASA said it's got more inaccuracies than any other movie. Fine. All right. I get it. It's not the most scientifically movie, but it's a fantastic movie. You know, I, I think it's got a great story, great characters, and, you know, to me, it's probably my favorite score in terms of all movies put together. It's about the world uniting to solve a problem. You know, I know it's a very raw, raw America, and they're at the, the head of this, but, like, you have people that are underdogs their entire life, kind of a little, a little rocky there, but, like, the you have the Harry Stamper, who's just an oil driller, doesn't know how to fail, and... You know, there's a lot of emotional scenes. I love the relationship between Harry and his daughter Grace. I love the, the, the scenes in space. I love the ending where Colonel Sharp goes and shakes Liv Tyler's hand because, you know, permission to speak, shake the hand of the bravest man I ever knew. Oh, like, it's just a good, it, it's got great action sequences, great comedy. Uh, I've always had a soft spot for Armageddon. That's really all I'm, I'm going to say about it. But number six... Die Hard. Ooh. Love Die Hard. You just you can't go wrong with Die Hard, right? Great Christmas movie. Great action. John McClane. Hans Gruber. Some great dialogue. Great sequences. And, you know, I find many action movies today make the mistake because of, of technology available to them in the special effects of going too big. Even we see that with the other Die Hard movies, right? Especially with the last two. But... You're in one building for an entire movie. You have a guy with no shoes that has to go on this mission killing one terrorist at a time. You have the you have Carl Winslow down below helping him on. You have the FBI or CIA being useless. It's just it's just a really good movie and how they work together. You know I don't, I don't. I don't want to say some of the dialogue because I don't know if there's children listening. But you know, obviously the Yippie Kaye is a great line, and Hans Gruber is one of the best villains ever. With a, and it has a great ending. Uh, so that would be my number six. Oh, that's a great number six. I'm not gonna lie. My number six is The Dark Knight. So The Dark Knight. Two Nolan movies on your list. Yeah, I have two Nolan movies. I'm kind of have a little bit of a Nolan bias, as you can <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Can't tell. I just love the concept of the Dark Knight and the reason why is just it's not even just the Joker like the Joker aspect is a great part but it puts one of the most famous Batman comics like the Kill em, it's its own version of the Kill and Joke right the Kill and Joke is pretty much all you need is one bad day that's Joker's point is all you need is one bad day and then you can become just like the Joker he does that to one of the characters. Harvey Dent becomes Two-Face because he has the one bad day, right? Uh, he flip, He goes from one of the most noble men to, instead of believing in prosecution, everything's up to faith now. He just flips a coin and he just murders them, right? Then if you, if you get the right side, you live. If you get the wrong side, you die, right? So that whole concept is like the Joker, technically the Joker won, like Batman has to create up this huge lie just to get just so that people don't see Harvey Dent in this way because it really it is he was it was two Joker and Batman are on the same sides are 
two sides of a different coin, right? I I don't think I said that right, so my the apologies. Joker broke Harvey Dent. You're absolutely right. Yeah, a hundred percent, right? So that's one of my main things. Is like Batman goes about making change his way. Joker goes about making change his way with anarchy and just lost in the system but you know that's one thing i really like about the dark knight and and i think movies today have lost that 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 character you know in today's world every villain needs a backstory Mm -hmm. as we're going to see with a joker movie yay (laughs) i'm excited uh no i'm not but every every villain needs a reason yeah but alfred's line some people just like to see the world burn there's no better line than that. That, that, yeah. that, is a, that describes the Joker in a nutshell. And sometimes villains, they're just bad people that want to see the world burn. And yeah. kudos to Christopher Nolan for making that. Yeah, there's a lot of movies which, you know, I'm not saying it's bad, but a lot of movies have the villains where we emphasize with them. You know, you're like, you know what? They're coming from a good point. Like, wrong way to go about it, but his intentions aren't wrong, right? Yeah. That's what we see a lot of time. The Joker... Like you said, he just wants to see the world burn. And we don't have that anymore most of the time. And when you're talking to someone like me who's a, like a purist, like Captain America, Superman, like good, 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 goody, good, goody, good two-shoes is who I like. I don't like when I can empathize, empathize, empathize with the villain. I just don't like it. Yeah, I, I definitely don't blame you. Great choice, though. Oh, thank you. Number five? Number five is Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> revolutionary movie. just like a revolutionary movie indeed for the luck so this is how i saw this movie literally two years ago yes like i said remember i'm not which was the one that got me into movies you're welcome so again. you know that scene where the guy's just walking around and then he just picks up his arm i've seen that scene multiple times in parodies like parody versions of that scene i didn't know that scene was in saving private ride so when i first saw it, i'm like that's where that scene is from i was just so shocked right but that's not the reason why i like the movie actually paying attention to the movie i'm just like wow this is such a great film tom hanks is fantastic he's one of my favorite actors he's probably top five that i've ever watched uh but it's just great seeing that journey of just to save that one one little private right and he's losing all his faith and his men are like why are we doing this for one person it's like it's because for the family right He believes in the government. Like, it's a trust in the system, right? It gets people to believe back into the government and things like that. That's what I really enjoy about the movie as well. Well, you know, and just to kind of what you said about early on, when Spielberg made that movie, before 1998 when that movie came out, war movies tended to be like glorifying war. One guy can run around and do whatever he wants. Yeah. Spielberg's like, that's not war. Mm -hmm. So when he was making that movie, he talked to a bunch of World War II vets and what it was like. And before he screened the movie to the public, he screened it to, to people who were at Juno Beach. Or not Juno, sorry. The D-Day beaches. Juno's the Canadian yeah. beach. And um, they left the movie saying, like, that was the closest they've ever experienced back to that to that day. To give you, like, some of the significance, other than war movies since then have kind of copied that, right? Yeah. Like, this real hard darkness to war. And, and Save Heart Ryan's really the first movie to do that. Yeah, 100%. I love love that movie. My number five movie is a little bit more lighthearted than that. It's Pirates <laughs> of the Caribbean, the first one, to be clear. Whoa, I didn't know you liked it that much. I love that movie. It was, <laughs> you know, I know Avengers is the newest movie on my list, but Pirates of, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean was a movie that was fun. Uh, I know it was a fun adventure movie. It, it, it didn't try to pretend to be something. It was funny. It was comedic. It it had some good sequences. The characters were great. And I can watch it over and over again. And, and I think to me when I'm making a list of, of top 10 movies or movies that I like, that, I, that are my favorites, they're movies that I can continuously watch. Sometimes movies I really like, I don't put on my top 10 list because I can't rewatch them. But Pirates of the Caribbean has tons of rewatchability. And Jack Sparrow is a great character. Fantastic. And after the first parts of the Caribbean, Disney didn't use him right. I don't criticize Disney a little bit. See, I'm not all pure Disney. Um, he's an outcast character. And in the first movie, that's how they used him. It wasn't Jack Sparrow's movie. It was Elizabeth and Will's movie. That Jack Sparrow was just kind of in there guiding them. Right? Or Barbosa was guiding them mm-hmm. together. Right? That's how the movie was. And then after the first movie, it was Jack Sparrow's movie. And making Jack Sparrow's movie, he's a questionable character. He's not a he's not the good guy. 
But if you make him the if you make him the focal point of your movie, he has to be the good guy. In the first parts of the Caribbean movie, they did a great job with not making him the focal point. That he, and it was a lot of fun. My number four is Back to the Future. Again, with a fun action adventure. Kind of see what kind of movies I like as my in my top five. <laughs> It's classic, right? 1985, mm-hmm. humor, Marty McFly, Biff Tannen, Doc Brown, great score. You know, the, some of the sequences were great. The, the sequence on the skateboard, when, the sequence when Marty talks to his dad and plays, I'm Darth Vader from the planet Balkan, playing rock music to scare him. Oh, like, it just, when... When Marty and his mom kiss, like, and you just tell, like, you see the look on his face, don't do it! Ew, it's gross! Just little <laughs> things like that. Like, it's just, that's a great trilogy in general, but the first movie is, it's one of the first movies I remember watching, at least in my adult, my older life, not obviously when I was young. And I just loved it ever since, and again, it's a movie I can watch again and again. That's great. Uh, my fifth movie is... Star Wars. I mean, fourth movie. I apologize. I can't okay. count today. <laughs> Star Wars, The Return of the Jedi. So, honestly, this is very iconic. Uh, the reason why I picked the third one is because it's like the end of the end of the trilogy. We see a satisfying end. Emperor Strikes Back's very good, but it's not a satisfying end to me because it ends on a cliffhanger. Uh, New Hope is great. I like the beginning. It's the beginning. Like a New Hope. That's pretty much what, <laughs> what the title is, right? There's hope. But this sees that entire that amazing trilogy bring it up to a satisfying end for me. Uh, you see, like, Luke finally goes on his journey. He, he goes from in the first movie being a lost kid. He's like, I don't want to do this, you know? And he's like, what's going on here? I'm not a Jedi. You're crazy. You're old and weird. Leave me alone. <laughs> You creep. <laughs> the second movie, he's he's rash. He wants to, he's like, I I gotta save my friends, but Luke, you're not trained. No, no, I gotta do Typical it. Typical teenager. Right? He gets he gets whomped by Vader, but this time he's calm, he's cool, collected. Right from the first scene you see him come in with Java, he's just like, I'm ready. He's a lot more poised, cool, calm, collected. Um one of the one of the scenes is I don't want to uh, spoilers for Last Jedi, which doesn't make sense. Is so Darth Vader, right? He stops. He doesn't kill Darth Vader. Like he's like, you know what? This guy he saw the good in Darth Vader, but in Last Jedi he doesn't see the good in a boy that hasn't had evil yet, right? So it doesn't make sense. But that's why that's one of the things I don't like about the Last Jedi, right? He saw the good in Vader, and he doesn't kill him. And then Vader. And because he doesn't kill him, Vader redeems everything and just destroys the Empire by killing the Emperor and then redeeming himself, right? He still killed a bunch of kids uh, in the prequels, but <laughs> that's just but that's another pro- that's another problem for yeah, another day. Right? But it's just the end of the journey, right? Just seeing everybody, everything just wrap up nicely. That's what I really liked about the Return of the Jedi. And my... Three. Uh, Number three here, I'm going to go put it all the way up to, it's funny, my last three are two mom movies, so it's The Godfather. <laughs> this movie, oh my goodness. <laughs> well, the, you know, I don't know, I think Godfather is one of the most rewatched movies that I've rewatched multiple times. It's so long, but I don't notice it every time. I'm just in love with it. Just Michael Corleone, Sonny Corleone, the Don Corleone. Right, just the lines are just so classic. What's your favorite line from it? I'll make him an offer he can't refuse. <laughs> just love, just love how the first beginning, like the first scene, is like I believe it's like super long, but it's just introducing every single character that's going to be in that movie. Like they took a long time introducing the character, but just the, it's just crazy. And the fact that it can stand the test of time, like the way it's, the cinematography was, like. I keep looking back. I'm like, this was made in the 70s. 72. Like this, like early 70s, not even late 70s, right? This is made in 72, and it just looks phenomenal still. And just the way everybody acted, just Al Pacino on point. Like one of my favorite scenes, is just Sunny. Like the scene where Sunny Corleone gets gunned down. I know it's sad, but I really like that scene because it just shows you like the dangers of mob and like the fact that you can get betrayed just so easily, right? And then at the end, we're 
Carleone just pulls off the greatest plan ever, right? It's just honestly phenomenal. I freaking love The Godfather. It's the best mob film of all time, but it's not my favorite mob <laughs> film of all time. <laughs> Spoiler alert. You know, it's funny that you said that your number three movie was the movie you've watched the most. Because my number three movie is the movie I've watched the most. I probably watched my number three movie around 500 to 1,000 times. Somewhere in between there. I know it sounds crazy. But I would go to my grandparents when I was like four, five, and six and watch it like four times in a row. I felt ba- I feel really bad for my grandparents that they had to watch it with me. It's, uh, it's Top Gun. And um, I-, I love Top Gun. It's... It's one of the movies that really put me on my career path. I love history, and I love military history, and Top Gun with their airplanes. Like, I wanted to be a pilot when I was younger. I'm afraid of flying, okay? I want to be a <laughs> pilot. Movies that have that kind of impact on you are those movies that, that's, that stand out. You know, great score. Um, you know, I, I've cried in three movies in my life, and Top Gun was one I cried in, like, every time from, like, four to, like, 16. Just, <laughs> poor, poor Goose. I love Goose. But just great sequences, and if, if anyone out there from Top Gun 2 is listening, please stop. <laughs> You're going to ruin his <laughs> just childhood. please stop. You've already ruined it with my number two movie, because my number two movie is Independence Day. And Independence Day 2 <laughs> is one of, the, one of the biggest pieces of crap I've ever seen, so <laughs> Top Gun 2, please just stop it. Just don't do it. It doesn't need to be done. But, you know, what I like about Independence Day, uh, it's an, it's an you know, anomaly of a movie. You know, alien attack movies aren't supposed to make money. They're supposed to be bad. Like, they're they're not good. And we see it with Independence Day, too. It, it, Independence Day caught lightning in a bottle. And, and I think I figured it out. You know, there are four elements to a good alien attacks movie. <laughs> Some movies take the political aspect to it. You see it in, like, Mars Attacks. <laughs> Some of it take the scientific element to it. We see it in the original War of the Worlds. Some people look at it from the um, civilian point of view. We see that with the new War of the Worlds. Some uh, alien attack movies take it from the um, militaristic, part, uh, militaristic point of view. We see that with Battle LA. But what Independence Day did is they put all those together, right? You got politics in Washington, science in, or, and sorry, and the president, science in New York with Jeff Goldblum. And in LA, you've got both a civilian who's going to, uh, Randy Quaid's character, who's going to destroy the final element, the final spaceship to figure out how to bring him down. And the military with Will Smith. You have them all together. They all combine together in Area 51. It's an anomaly. And, you know, it's one of those movies that, you know, just... It's, I think it will withstand the test of time. Like You've seen the director try to make movies where the world gets destroyed, 2012, or I'm trying to think of some of his other movies. They don't succeed. Because although we like some destruction, we like a good plot with it, and that's what Independence Day had that most Alien Attack movies don't have. A great plot that withstands the test of time. 100%. I, I totally agree. Really enjoyed Independence Day. So good. Nothing's that, nothing's Not the second that, like, one. Please say you don't like the second one. <laughs> I do not like the second one. <laughs> I, for, I forgot what happened in the second one, you, so it's don't, not don't that good. <laughs> they brought back Brent Spiner. Oh. He nothing. came... There's... No. So I, in Rocky and Creed, they kill people. In in Independence Day, they bring people that don't need to be brought back brought back to life. <laughs> also killing Will Smith, though, in it, too. Yeah, that's true. Uh, my number two is The Goodfellas, which is... Uh, my favorite mob movie of all time. So, uh, mob movies are one of my one of my guilty pleasures, right? So, uh, I like the Goodfellas. It's just excellent performances from Joe Pesci and uh, Robert De Niro. Just really enjoyed that whole aspect. Uh, just the the line. My favorite line is from the start. As long as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. I just love that line. Just from right then and there, I just fell in love with just the aspect, the story, the cinematography, just the, just everything. I just have to read. The thing is, I watched it only three times, and I want to watch it more. I just saw it on Netflix. I'm like, what is this? I'm like, this is great. Let me just watch more of this. Give me more of it. It's just wonderful. I know it's not your favorite movie. I actually do not really like The (laughs) Goodfellas. Don't judge me too hard. I love Casino, which I think is better. Uh, Casino's good, too, but I... I don't know. Goodfellas is just on top. I don't top know why. I just, uh, I mean, it's it's, it's uh, yeah, you know what? Go ahead. Could you, and, and your number one movie for 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 the audience watching. My number one movie. So if you guys are paying attention, I am a comic book nerd. 
my f number one movie of all time based on nostalgia bias everything is the first avengers okay Ooh, good choice love the it first <laughs> thank you the first avenger the reason for me is the performances are great we all know that the you've touched on everything but for me like being a kid that just watched like read comics i would never i never would have think that we would get to this point like the fact that we have all these characters that i love like i loved cap i loved hulk loved iron man loved hawkeye even though nobody thinks hawkeye is good i think <laughs> hawkeye is great <laughs> but just to see that on the feed that's what started it all and then if it wasn't for that first avengers we wouldn't have infinity war which almost made it on the list. I was debating whether to put Infinity War or Avengers. But if, if it wasn't for Avengers, it laid the true groundwork for what we have for what we have now, which is oh sorry. And I would say more importantly for you, if it's not for the Avengers, your favorite superhero, Spider Man, probably doesn't come into the MCU because Sony probably doesn't give up on their hope of making a good Spider Man movie. A hundred percent, right? They were able to the reason why that success was, yeah, they got Spider-Man. And I love, love, love Spider-Man. and Especially Tom Holland. <laughs> and Tom Holland as, Sp as Spider-Man is Spider-Man to a T. I don't know what they did, but that was, I'm like, the quibs. He played Peter Par Parker perfectly and Spider-Man perfectly. Like, in the in Amazing Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield played a good good uh spider-man but he did not look like peter parker to me at all i'm like this guy's too cool what the hell he's skateboarding okay no instantly not into it Tobey Maguire played a good peter parker but spider-man no just no, i'm sorry toby just not for you buddy he but was you also played... like 30 years old when he put on <laughs> spider-man's mask yeah so he he wasn't doing it. but like tom holland perfect to a t he just has the quips everything it's just wow i was just shocked i almost went into tears because i was just like they finally got spider-man right i was i was there he was crying <laughs> don't let him say he almost got the tears he okay. was crying like thank you so thank you're just you, gonna Marvel. embarrass me on the internet like that you know this is on here forever yeah so i know hey thank you hey i, I appreciate I, that yeah you're welcome you're welcome. I got you told me I, you told them I, I I ran into a kid and did not have the popcorn now. <laughs> true. <laughs> That's probably worse. A hundred percent. I'm not gonna lie. That is definitely <laughs> true. Uh, what's your number one? My number one has been my number one movie since 1993. Those of you who know movies well probably know where I'm going with this. And it's not the depressing 1993 Steven Spielberg one. It's the other one, the action adventure one. Um. It's the first movie I remember seeing in theaters. And I, and I saw it twice. And uh, it's the movie that, again, helped put me on my career path. It has dinosaurs in it. My number one movie is Jurassic Park. I I can't say enough good things about it. Um, characters, plot, story, um, the way it's written. Everything about it's so good. And it's withstood the test of time. You know, in 2013, it was re-released in IMAX. And I don't know if you know this about IMAX, but some IMAX movies aren't shot in IMAX, so they're not full IMAX screen. You're paying all that extra money for what you would get in a regular screen, and some of them are actually shot in IMAX. So if you watch The Dark Knight, sometimes it's small, sometimes it goes big. <laughs> when Jurassic Park was re-released in IMAX, it was big. It was IMAX the entire time because that's how good it was. And I'm sorry to the Jurassic World mo bad movies that they make, but the T-Rex and the dinosaurs look better in the 1993 movie than they do in, in the 20... What year did Jurassic World 2 come out? Last year? Yeah, 2017. The 2017 T-Rex. They look, they look more fake today. So again, that goes to the greatness of Steven Spielberg. That goes to the time they put into that movie. Uh, again... Everything was fantastic about it. So Jurassic Park is my favorite movie. It has been my favorite movie since '93, and I can't see at this point with that with that nostalgia of movie beating it. Oh, that's honestly that's a great choice. I loved that movie, but it scared the crap out of me because I was still very young as a child watching that movie. It scared me. My my, my friend, uh, she had to leave the theater after when the T Rex attacked the car, and Lexington put that put its head into the car. Her and her sister had to leave the theater. <laughs> Not gonna lie, kind of funny. <laughs> I feel bad laughing. 